Welcome to Cute Widgets and More. In today's episode, I brought Giuseppe D'Angelo, also known as Pepe. Pepe, what are we going to talk about in just one sentence? Today, we're going to talk about Comst. Okay, welcome. Let me uh, just warn you, you might have already seen that this is rated PG-17. And that's because that I might actually try and cough my lung out. Uh, but we wanted to get you some new material here. So uh, please forgive me if that happens. I can assure you, if I'm going to die, we're not going to put this out anyway. Welcome, Pepper. For you, it might be different. I might be dying in front of your eyes. Okay, please, yes, so, do not die today. <laughs> we have very important gonna... things to talk about. We do indeed. I've seen that in my source code, you have recently put in something called propagate const. And um, I do somewhat understand all of that, but I, I think it's actually interesting and something for our viewers to, to see here. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Your new new class called propagate const, or actually it's not not even your invention, but uh, you made it work at least for, for us in the cute world. But I would like to start somewhere completely different. I would like to understand why do we need const? And of course, I personally understand that. But for our viewers that might be sitting out there and saying, hey, why do I need const in my in my code to start with? Right. So uh, if you're new to C++, or maybe not so new, you, of course, know about the uh, keyword const that you can apply to various things in C++. And uh, as developers, we try and strive to uh, apply const as much as possible inside your source code. Uh, const is, first and foremost, a huge help for you, the person, the developer, because it allows you to reason better about your programs. Uh, once you have uh, uh, fewer moving parts inside your program, once you have fewer things that can mutate under your nose, it becomes much simpler to understand what a program is doing. And so what we try to do is to apply const as much as possible in order to, again, be able to reason about your programs and understand, is this program, is this code that I'm writing uh, correct? Is it doing the right thing? And you can reason about it. You can say, yes, the only thing that I need to mutate, it's mutating and nothing else is mutating. And I know that because I'm protecting the things that I don't want to change uh, using const. So that's in a nutshell mm -hmm. what const is at a very high level. OK, and propagate const, uh, I understand this much by now that that's about pointers in our in our source codes. But maybe you could start out saying, why do we even need pointers in our source code? Why not just have, have members all over the place? OK, right. So uh, if I have to give you a complete answer to that question, we're probably going to create five or six or seven uh, cute widgets and more episodes. Uh, let me try to focus the conversation on indeed cute widgets and we'll see okay. the more in just a second so we are cute developers right uh, we write a lot mm -hmm. of cute code and uh, we write a lot of uh, q object subclass we write a lot of q widget subclasses if you're in cute quick you write a lot of cute quick item subclasses and so on uh, but mm -hmm. let's have a look at a, a double quote typical q widget subclass that everybody has created everybody who has used cute for like for more than five minutes as created. So you can see right here, Jesper, on your screen, yeah. that what I've created here is a very typical uh, QWidget subclass. I got my widget, I inert from QWidget, I have a constructor, and inside this class, I've got a few uh, sub objects. All right. And notice how these sub objects are declared. They're all pointers to other objects. Maybe you've got a data model, mm -hmm. maybe you've got a tree view, you've got a line edit, you've got various bits and bolts, various pieces that uh, compose your widget. And then, of course, uh, you're going to, in your constructor, typically initialize them and build them. Okay, so, so far, so good. And I think that everybody can agree this is double quote, typical cute code. Yeah, so, yeah, seen that before. Right. So, uh, I might challenge you a little bit because you are used to this code, but every time I present this code something new to Qt, they're going to look at those pointers and start getting scared. Because mm -hmm. those are raw pointers. And uh, you see a lot of news inside this code online on those lines down, down there. 
And people get scared, oh, wait a minute, are we using pointers for memory management? You know, uh, the year is 2023, we have better things than row pointers for memory management. Right? Yeah. We are yeah. Super Why are those not smart pointers? Well, what's going on here? I mean, is this typical Qt code? Oh my god, Qt is ancient. Uh, right, <laughs> there is some truth in there. There is also some uh, something which is not entirely true. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, to reassure viewers of this code, this code does not have double quote memory leaks. This code is correct. And the reason why those are row pointers has to do with the fact that uh, uh, Qt implements an ownership model itself. So you don't need those to be smart pointers. Uh, specifically, down here, uh, the fact that uh, you see all those these parameters passed to the sub-objects, uh, that realizes, mm. the passing these realizes what in Qt we call the parent-child relationship, in which the this object, the widget you're building, is becoming the parent of those uh, sub-objects. And so when Later on, you're going to destroy this widget. Uh, Qt will take care to, of destroying also all these sub-objects. So the data model but, will but, be destroyed, the trivia will get destroyed, the line will get destroyed, and then everything will be just fine. But play play with me here for a yeah. second. And I know the answer. I just got to keep my, my honor here. I know the answer, but couldn't we just go and nuke all those asterisks on line 25 to 27 and just... Uh, have them as data members in there. Of course you can. Of course you can. So once we are convinced that uh, using pointers here actually works, and let me actually for a second double down on this. Uh, these are row pointers, and they're specifically row pointers because you don't own the objects through those pointers. They are owned through the cute parent child mechanism. But sure, uh, okay. let me entertain you with this alternative, which is just over here. Okay. So uh, now we've got my widget 2, or version 2, which is exactly like before. Uh, but mm -hmm. instead of uh, aggregating pointers uh, inside my widget class, now I'm aggregating the entire sub-object. So I'm, now I have a sub-object of type data model, tree view, line edit, whatever. Okay, so this is much more double quote natural in modern C++. Uh, why do we need to create a pointer and then allocate an object uh, for it when I, if this object, double quote, belongs to me, if I'm not just pointing to an object which sits somewhere else, I can just use the whole object as a data member. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, again, when I try to explain these to newcomers to Qt, now comes the question. So which one is better? Right? That's what people want always to hear. Which one is the best <laughs> practice? Which one I'm supposed to use for my own code? Mm -hmm. And uh, the answer here is that uh, there are some trade-offs, really. Uh, it's not that one is super strictly better than another. So certainly this version here uh, allows you to avoid pointers. You don't see any new in your code, and that makes people feel much more relaxed regarding memory management. Uh, but it comes with a couple of downsides as well. Uh, for instance, if you use this version, uh, then when you have a header that is just defining your widget subclass, then that header must include the definitions of data model, tree view, and QLAN edit. If you know mm -hmm. a little bit more mm -hmm. C++, if you have the other version, the version with the pointers, if you have to declare a pointer to something, you don't necessarily need to include the whole definition of that something. You can simply forward declare that something. You can simply write class QLAN edit, and that simply tells the compiler, look, there is a thing called QLAN edit, okay? I'm not going to tell you what it is right here, right now, but for you, please consider QLAN edit the name as a class. And that's enough for me mm -hmm. to declare mm -hmm. a pointer to it. That's all for you. So, and if and if you are one of those people out there that actually care about compilation time, uh, there's a link right whoops, somewhere. Yep. And with the microphone here, there's a link for a, an episode uh, where I was talking about how to speed up your compilation. So, Pepe, the other question is, couldn't we just do this with a, with a, a Q unique pointers then? Of course we could. So let me go back to the bad version. It's not bad, as I said. Uh, this has an important trade-off. Uh, but, uh, mm -hmm. okay, so why row pointers? Why not smart pointers, like unique pointer or something along those lines? Uh, 
So uh, we could, but uh, again, technically speaking, a unique pointer would be the uh, would be an overkill and also slightly wrong uh, data type to use here, because the point is that these objects uh, are one way or another uh, owned by uh, owned through the cute parent child mechanism. And in some cases, you cannot avoid that. For instance, if you have now these sub widgets like a tree view or a line edit, and you install them into your widget as you should, as I think this code wants to do, uh, then you cannot avoid the cute uh, ownership through parent and child because adding a sub widget into a bigger widget will always make it a child. So it will always impose that ownership relation. And so by making this pointer a unique pointer, you're somehow saying that now there are two ownership relations for that particular object. One, which is the one expressed by the unique pointer, and another one, which is one defined by cute. And although, to be honest, to be very pedantic, if you use a unique pointer, it will actually work because cute is smart enough and not to double delete. You know, there is a lot of clever logic in there to avoid surprises. Uh, it still feels wrong that you have the same object owned twice through through mm. two different ownership mechanisms. So, uh, and we also have the problem that many places Qt expects a raw pointer, yep. say add add layout or add widget to the layout, and and so on. Yes, although that is kind of manageable, that is expected from uh, um, uh, from smart pointer classes that uh, they don't just allow you to get the raw pointer. That is inside of them. You always need to call things like get or similar to extract the raw pointer. So it would make the code slightly more verbose. Uh, but yeah, I I get the point. So um, that that's why oh. that's why we don't necessarily see a lot of smart pointers used around Qt. Okay. Okay, we have accepted now. We need const. We have accepted that we have these pointers in our class. And then there is, of course, the whole problem of what is const, and that's the whole, the whole point of the blog post that you you wrote yes. uh, on on this stuff. And there is a very excellent blog post out there that uh, that I will link to here in the notes be below. It goes into all of what we're talking about and some implementation details of how Pepper managed to solve a bunch of problems with uh, with the existing uh, propagate const uh, classes, but. Let's not go delve into the, the details on, on, on that. Um, I seem to have a problem with the gravity around here. Uh, <laughs> that uh, I did pay the gravity tax, mind you. Uh, but nevertheless, could you, could you enlighten me just for a second and possibly even some, some viewers here on const? There is, a, there is const here and there's const there and const everywhere. And I can never figure out where exactly to put const when I'm talking about pointers. OK, so let's intersect the two topics, OK, constants and pointers. Uh, it's important to understand that when you have a pointer to an object, uh, there are actually two things uh, that, are, that, that, that you have in your hands, right? You have the pointer and you have the pointed to object, OK, the target. Hmm. OK, yeah. uh, in C++, you can apply const at either level depending on what you need, depending on what you want to mean in a particular piece of code, all right? So uh, you can apply the const to the pointer, and that means you cannot mutate the pointer. You cannot make it point to somewhere else. I should probably get, grab some props for this. I'm going to grab a prop for a pointer. So that's my pointer. It's a tiny, shiny pointer. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use this, yeah, this box right here, the huge box, as a pointed to object, OK? So your okay. pointer, and it points to this object. And the question is, what part of this scheme do you want to make const? Okay, do you want the pointer to be const, or do you want the pointed to object to be const, or maybe both, or maybe none of them? Okay, C++ has enough syntax to allow to express you all of this, although this syntax at first looks surprising and a little bit messy. But sure, I mean, you have to understand that uh, uh, it's messy because there are two levels happening. There are two th different things, and you can plaster const on each thing depending on your needs. So what I have prepared for you is a little, well, not a little, but a lot of code that tries and showcases you 
uh, where you can apply const when you declare a pointer to something. Okay. And mm, uh, mm. there is a lot of ways, a lot of variations. So let's go through them one at a time. Let's take our time and uh, digest everything. Okay. Okay. So uh, thing number one, okay, is that uh, we have this P1 and that's a pointer to a line edit. Okay. Plain and simple. The pointer, the shiny object is non-const and the line edit, the target is non-const, not const either. Okay. So what you can do is that at a certain point, you can do a new line edit. So notice that this is mutating the pointer. It's taking the pointer, which is pointing to, to this box at the moment and saying, don't point to this box anymore, point to that box over there. So point to another box. Okay. So line 71 here on the screen is changing the, the destination of the pointer. And then mm. line 72 is following the pointer, going to the pointed to object, going to the target and mutating the target. So it's calling a, for instance here, a non-const method on the line edit. Now, please stay with me. I know that there is no such mutate function on QLine edit. It's, I, would, <laughs> I, I really want to stress the fact that that's a mutating function, all right? Something that mm. uh, is, um, is potentially So that could modifying. be set text, for example. Yes, it could be set text, clear, any, any, of, the, of, any of the sorts. Okay. okay. So that's, so far, so good. Now let's start introducing const and we can see that there's a lot of ways in which we can introduce const. So the first thing that we may decide to make const could be the pointer itself. Okay, so I'm applying mm -hmm. const to the pointer, meaning I can no longer change where this pointer points to. So what I do there is line 75, I have P2 and I say that's a const pointer to line edit. Uh, I'm very old school. And I read somewhere, I think it was on the Kenny and Ritchie book, or maybe some of those long lines, that uh, the simpler, the simplest way to reason about reading these declarations is reading them uh, right to left, which of course makes total sense. Okay, yeah, we are in the... <laughs> Why do C++ users punish themselves? But, you know, stay with me again, you know, read it right to left. That's a const pointer to line edit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that, it's, cool. it's literally what's there. So again, uh, so not again, but now what I can't do is reset it. So P2 equal Q, uh, new Q line edit. No, I cannot do that. You cannot mutate mm -hmm. the pointer. Uh, P2 mutate. Yes, that's still fine. You can still follow the pointer and change the pointed to object. Yep. So uh, this might be surprising, but again, that's what you you told literally. You said that the pointer is constant, not the pointed to object. So how do we make the pointed to object constant? Well, we apply const further to the left. So take a look at P3. Let's read it again, right to left. That's a pointer to a line edit, which is constant. Now, some mm. people don't like think about that because a pointer to a line edit with this constant sounds kind of verbose. So I also have this other version down here, P3B. It's the same type. It's exactly the same thing, but now it's again more readable. That's a pointer to a const line edit, right? Always <laughs> right to left. Mm. Now, uh, cool. what, what happens now with P3 or P3 beta uh, is that uh, now you can mutate the pointer. You can take the pointer and make it point elsewhere if you want to, but you cannot mutate the line edit. So uh, calling a mutate clear, set text, whatever, the line edit will not work. And as a final <laughs> thing, yes, we can have const at both levels. I can make a pointer that you cannot modify, pointing to a line edit that you cannot modify. And so here I'm going to repeat const twice because I need to apply const to two different things. So there's two consts, okay? Look at P4, that right to left, a const pointer to a line edit, which is const, or for symmetry, P4 beta down there, P4B, const pointer to const line edit. Okay. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person in this world who, who hadn't heard about the right to left rule and who always have been fighting on where to put cons to get the right thing to be cons. So if for nothing else, that was worthwhile my time. So 
thank you very much on that. But of course, this is not the the, the thing of this uh, this topic either. It yes. was just a detour. The thing comes around when we have a const method, right? Right. So uh, let's again bring this back into uh, our original design. The fact that we are using, we are creating a Q widget subclass or any Q object subclass. And uh, clearly, of course, if I just declare a pointer, I know precisely what is const, what is not const. However, let's go back to a scenario in which I have a widget subclass, okay, and uh, or a Q object subclass or in general C++ class, all right? But uh, I'm, I'm sticking with widgets for the sake of the example. And now, suppose that you have um, uh, a data member, okay, int data. So you mm -hmm. can clearly see that uh, that int data member is non-const declared like that. There is no const written anywhere. Does that make sense, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that data member can, however, become const. And it can become const in a very specific context, which is const methods. Yeah. If you add a const method in this class, for instance, this do something, very aptly named do something const. Okay, what does this const mean that with the const that you write over there? Well, that means that the object, the this object, is going to be considered const within this method. Okay. And that due to how C++ works, will make that data actually const itself. So mm. that inside this function, data is a const int. And for then, it, that also means you cannot write something like data equal 1, 2, 3. You cannot mutate yeah. that integer, right? We know that. That's, that's, that's straightforward. That's, that's const methods 101 we have there. Right. But now, and now, let me add. While Pepe is writing, I will do the drum solo here. Because okay. now we get pointers into the whole game, and that changes stuff in mysterious ways. Or does it? Right. So now, what I did is, again, I just extended this very naturally. Let me get back a uh, line edit, OK, into, the, into my widget. Mm -hmm. And uh, so. Exactly what did I add? Now I added a pointer to line edit. Okay, uh, I'll discuss the implication of what happens if that is not a pointer in just a second. But now that's a pointer to line edit. So does this mean that within my const method I cannot mutate the line edit? Does this mean that inside here I cannot do uh, m line edit uh, set text uh, hello? And unfortunately, the answer is you can do that. This code does actually compile. This code does actually work. And why is that? Well, uh, let's reason about this, about what is actually const within a const method. OK, what is const there is the pointer and not the pointed to object, right? The pointer is part of this class. This class is const. And so the pointer is const. But nowhere we said, uh, no, wait a minute. I don't want just the pointer to be const. I want also the pointed object to be const. OK, so line the, the M line edit mutate set text clear is actually completely fine in that particular circumstance. Now, by particularly fine, by, sorry, by perfectly fine, I mean that uh, C is fine with that. Mm. But in the broader scheme of uh, const correctness, it is actually good that we are able to mutate sub-objects from within a const method. In the general case, the answer is actually no. Maybe it's not a good idea. OK, uh, what happens if one of the sub-objects is storing some uh, state that logically belongs to your class? Effectively, this means that from within that cost method, you are mutating the state. And as I said at the beginning, the whole point of const is to allow us to be sure that, uh, look, I got something and that something is not being changed. OK, and now you're just telling me that, no, that, wait, I mean, this line of reasoning just falls apart as soon as you introduce pointers into the equation, because now you have a const method and, uh, and that can mutate the state of the widget. So the 
caller of this code could have a const widget. That's fine. It can, they can call do something, and you can call do something on a const widget because that's a const method. And then that const method changes state of the widget. You know, that is kind of unexpected and double quote wrong, as I said, in the broader scheme of const correctness. And I guess for those people who's using the D pointer idiom, uh, this is really annoying because you have a const method and well, it doesn't mean anything because you, the only thing you have is a pointer, the D pointer to something else. And all that something else is still open for, for changes. Yep. You, uh, yes and no. <laughs> you still need to be a little bit more okay. careful because when you use D pointers, there are ways to uh, mitigate this impact. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, those are kind of opt-in techniques, exactly as the ones that I'm going to show you to you. So um, right. by default, yeah, a D pointer would allow you to follow the D pointer and uh, uh, mutate stuff inside your pimple and do mm. all of that from within a const method. So that right. does not right. sound good, right? Let's let's see some code here, Pepper. This is, uh, I don't have a count, but we're definitely 10, 15 minutes in or maybe even more. I still haven't shown me a single line of code that solves this problem for me and doing stuff will propagate const. That's the title of this, uh, this episode is. So can you show me some code? Yes, of course. So, uh, uh, assuming that we want to stick with this idea that we want to use uh, pointers, right? So, uh, let me go a step back first. Uh, it should be clear that if I'm not using pointers here, if this is a sub-object, as we discussed one second ago, so if I remove that mm -hmm. and I remove that... Very long second, but yeah, yes. Yes, sure. okay, and I do this, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, this now is already is correct again. So. Uh, this code is uh, not compiling anymore because you're trying to mutate mm -hmm. a const object. All right. Yeah, but uh, yeah. can I have like both? Can I have both uh, the best of two words? So can I have somehow uh, const propagation for pointers as well as uh, the ability of you still using pointers? So the benefits and compilation times and whatnot. Uh, the answer mm -hmm. is that we can do that, but we need a little bit of help from uh, some helper classes. Uh, thankfully, I'm sitting on the shoulders of giants because I'm not, <laughs> I did not invent this at all. Uh, but uh, there is inside the standard, inside a uh, the, uh, an extension to the standard library, a little class that uh, will uh, help us here. And that little class is mm -hmm. called propagate const. Okay, so let me go down here. I already wrote this code because I don't want to make a mistake when I type something as long, <laughs> but. Inside the standard experimental uh, namespace, there is this little class which is called propagate const. Okay, the purpose of this class is to wrap a pointer, either a row pointer, but also making here an example with a smart pointer. Because guess what? Smart pointers have exactly the same issue, right? Uh, you, mm -hmm. if you make them const, you can still follow the pointer, get to the object, get to the target and uh, mutate the object. And uh, uh, the example here is simply showcasing that I have two different things, like here, a search field and a data model. I, what I did is simply, instead of declaring it as a Qline edit star, I wrapped the whole thing inside standard experimental propagate const. And once I do that, all of a sudden, almost by magic, from within a const method, I can no longer uh, mutate the line edit itself. So not only I cannot mutate mm. the pointer, but all of a sudden the pointed true object became const. So I achieved this double quote propagation of const from uh, the wrapper, the propagate const, all the way down into the target, the line edit. And this awesome. is great, right? This is great for two reasons. First, because it solves a very uh, a very common issue with the uh, said cute code. So we started the example of all this. Said let's stick with cute. Let's not make this a broad discussion of pointers in C because otherwise we'll be staying here a week. But in cute we do use a lot of row pointers, and by doing so we're somehow trading away const correctness. Uh, the point of this class, the point of propagate const, is that it allows you to resume const to restore const correctness 
and also to do so in a uh, double quote uh, drop in replacement fashion that is the theory is that you can just take your member that was declared as queue line edit pointer change the type of that very very simply to propagate const queue line edit star and that's it the rest of your code should not need any further change but before you leave this uh, channel here today and uh, continue on to watch something else there is a uh, there is a a, a a a stone in the shoe i, I believe it's called uh, i see stood colon colon experimental that means it's not properly in c++ today so without going into in million details what is the problem with with this stuff here is it not working on all my compilers or where's the problem yep uh, you will have that problem because uh, this thing is for instance not implemented on uh, microsoft it's implemented mm. by uh, gcc and clang in their respective standard libraries uh, but it's experimental because this is part of a as, as them says experimental set of extensions to the standard library which uh, it's out there so that people can play with this, understand is this useful, is this not useful, is this good, does, it, does this thing have like bugs and people don't like the API for whatever reason. So it's a way to allow the standard library to evolve itself um, without mm. adding so things to the standard library and then once it's official, it's official. Here it's semi-official. So, in, so stuff in study experimental could change the behavior or the API or could even completely vanish. Uh, so yes. Take take me further. I know there is now in KD Toolbox, there is an experimental, not experimental, <laughs> a propagate const in there. Tell me a bit about that. Yes, right. So uh, of course, I didn't want to uh, just use this on, uh, on GCC and Clang. I also wanted the people to use this uh, on Microsoft. And so what I did was I, um, I just re-implemented the propagate const within KD Toolbox. Uh, so it's there. It's a little header that you can just download or you know fetch it as part of uh, a Git submodule. By the way, do you want to know and more I about Git submodules? <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy who knows a guy that knows about <laughs> Git submodules. <laughs> the, li the link is, as usual, in the video description. And yep. uh, anyways, the point is that, uh, uh, yes, you may not find uh, uh, standard experimental propagate const shipped with your compiler. So just use the one in a KD toolbox. Uh, the idea there is that uh, um, it's uh, completely API compatible with propagate const. And let's say a few years in the future, people decide, okay, this is actually useful. Let's uh, bring it into the standard library. Uh, mm. Then the idea would be and to that's... minimize the, of course, the the breakage. So rather than using a KD toolbox colon colon propagate const, you'll be able to just do a search on a place with the standard propagate const, and it will be good mm. to go. And if I understand correctly, uh, it's not just a, taking a copy from Clang and putting that into KD toolbox. You also fixed uh, uh, some box in there. For yeah. details on that. Go and check out uh, the, the the blog post that we also link to. But before we before we end here, Pepe, I have I have one concern though. You're talking about uh, queue line edit pointer and so on in 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 your code, and and I don't write queue line edit pointer in my codes anymore. I let uh, a little friend of mine called UIC write that code. I do my stuff in in Qt Designer, and then UIC will spit out that code. I admit that I might have a uh, queue uh, abstract item model pointer somewhere in there, but for the the majority part of it, it comes from Qt Designer. So, what's the cure for that? Right. So, um, I'll actually elaborate. Uh, I, I want to give you a more comprehensive answer. But yes. Uh, so, uh, if you do have auto-generated code like the one that uh, UIC compiles from a UI file, UIC will give you a header file containing uh, uh, the UI class double quote, mm -hmm. as well as the implementation of a few functions like uh, the famous setup UI and so on. So uh, uh, what I do have there is that uh, I do have, for the moment being, an experimental patch to UIC that is going to uh, decorate all those pointers with whatever you want. So what where we want right now is, of course, propagate const. So rather than declaring row pointers to line edit, row pointers to checkbox uh, and, and so on and so forth, 
uh, it will uh, the it may be able to declare something like propagate const pointer to line edit propagate const pointer to layout uh, so uh, for the moment it's a bit experimental patch uh, in the sense that of course it works it emits the right code uh, but there are still a few things to iron out uh, especially when it comes to uh, build system support for all of this because eventually the point is that you don't call UIC manually so even if I add mm. a command line option or a few command line options to uh, tweak the output of UIC and for it to be able to de to, uh, uh, to emit propagate const things, uh, you don't invoke it manually anyways. It's a uh, CMake or QMake or whatever build system you're using that is invoking uh, UIC. And so we will also need to extend the support to a build system level so that you are able to say, okay, inside my project, I have these UI files. Uh, please uh, auto UIC if you're using CMake or, or whatever, or manual calls to uh, UICs, uh, to UIC compiler. Please also pass in these options that uh, UIC now recognizes in order to um, in order to generate propagate const wrapping. And uh, as usual, again, it's a bit more complicated than that because do you want standard propagate const? Do you want a KD toolbox propagate const? Do you want something else? So there is a lot of flexibility there that we need to uh, to somehow manage. But I don't expect that to be a problem, right? UIC is a fundamentally a code generator. It's easy to change the code generator itself so that the generated code contains propagate const. So that part mm -hmm. will be easy. If we see again in a few years, maybe that patch uh, is now a thing. It's been merged in Qt. Uh, 6.10 or 6.12 or something like that. Hopefully those. before that. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe maybe before that. And uh, we can leave with, uh, um, we will already be in a situation where all of that will be dealt with. Uh, but that's only I will half definitely of be the story, a, right? Uh, I'll definitely be a user of that, that as soon as it comes out. <laughs> right. Though I foresee that my future will have a quite a few of a const cast in it. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully not. <laughs> um, so that's the that's uh so so let me put out a challenge here. Uh, this also smells a bit like uh, you want to check your existing code for do you actually use those uh, those uh, pointers and uh, let me put out a challenge. Uh, I will uh, give you a uh, a one minute of fame here on cute widgets and more to tell us about your invention if you are the one who implement in classy a check for this and uh, it's not yep. straightforward is it yeah that's right i mean the other aspect here is the of course massive amount of existing code so uh, of course any new code that you can write you can start adopting these kind of patterns you can start experiment with them but uh, for existing code uh, we have a problem in the sense that uh, you have you can have classes with a ton of uh, uh, pointers as members and it's mm. very, very hard to identify uh, which of these pointers uh, do you want to wrap in propagate const. And again, what do I mean by that? I mean that uh, you're not supposed to actually just plaster propagate const everywhere you got a pointer, because not all pointers are equal. Some pointers point to objects uh, whose state kind of logically belong to the state of this object. Okay. So you don't want to mutate those objects from a const method of the class. But mm. other pointers, maybe they don't own state that relates to this class. Maybe you do want to mutate the target. Uh, you want to have side effects on the target through that pointer. And so it's very hard to come up with a rule that says, uh, OK, please look at this class. And by look, I mean, please, automatic tools such as Clazy, take a look at this class. Take a look at its members. Is it a pointer? Yes. Wrap it or don't wrap it in propagate const. Uh, it's not easy at all to uh, come up with a rule that uh, will not either do too much and wrap a lot of things that it's not supposed to wrap or be useless because it doesn't wrap anywhere enough for it for this to be effective, for this to actually uh, discover bugs. And by the way, yes, mm -hmm. I did discover bugs by applying these on some projects. Uh, so I definitely think this is a useful thing to have, uh, but doing it at large, yes, indeed, will give you 
uh, maybe even a few minutes of fame on this on this channel uh, uh, if you manage to pull it off. All right. Uh, again, the good news is that we live in 2023. Uh, automatic tooling for refactoring does exist. Okay, it's not uh, a guy that knows Perl, maybe me, and <laughs> just just writes and a bit of regular expressions. Yeah. Huh? I know regular expressions. Okay, <laughs> everybody stand back. I do know my regular expressions. <laughs> uh, I am the Q regular expression maintainer, so uh, that that's that part is fine. But we don't refactor code through regular expressions. We have really mm. good tooling that does semantic changes. Uh, that's great. Mm. Uh, but this kind of semantics, I'm afraid it's a bit of outside what a tool can actually understand regarding your code. But still, it would be a very oh. interesting experiment to do. Thank you very much, Pepe. It was a pleasure, as always, to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, and congratulations on, on fixing those very nasty bugs in uh, Propagate Const. I cannot uh, urge you enough to go and read the blog post if you're interested in, in more of this. And uh, until next time, well, first of all, let me just uh, do a bit of advertising here. Uh, we in KDAP actually do make a living from helping people on their project. So if you think that uh, that this dude, Pepe, is a really smart cookie, maybe you should get in contact with us and, uh, and he might be helping you out on your project in one way or the other or one of our other coworkers. In any case, thank you very much for watching yet another episode of Git Witches and More. Okay.